change is that A, B, and C lenders determine this in different ways. The secret is to know which type of lenders are the most likely to approve your file. It's no secret that it's the hardest it's ever been to get a mortgage. At the wrong lender, it can be next to impossible to get approved, so I will show you how you can find the right lender and how to get approved easily. The first thing you need to know is that there's three classes of lenders. A lenders with the lowest rates and the strictest guidelines, B lenders with higher costs and far more flexible guidelines, and C lenders with the highest cost and the greatest flexibility. Each class of lender has its own strengths and weaknesses. The key to getting the best deal is knowing which type of lender will result in the lowest cost to you. Quite often, the solution with the lowest cost to you doesn't have the lowest rate. A lenders consist of banks, credit unions, and monoline lenders. Where there are some differences is in how they operate. They all have the lowest rates and strictest guidelines though. A lenders solve the are you a safe investment question by making sure there's enough income to pay for your debts and still be able to live your life. This is called debt servicing. Banks offer competitive rates in a wide range of products. Working with the right bank is key as each bank has a unique set of products and policies. Your mortgage may be a guaranteed decline at four of the major banks in Canada, but a slam dunk at the fifth. The trick is knowing which bank to present or to approach and how to present your file. Next is monoline lenders. They're often owned or funded by the major banks. They specialize in extremely low cost rates for CMHC insured mortgage purchases and renewals. These lenders tend to have some of the lowest breakage penalties as a bit of a bonus. The trade-off with monoline lenders is that they generally follow the CMHC guidelines and are some of the strictest lenders in Canada when it comes to the income qualifying rules. Banks and monolines are very rigid in their lending because they must follow rules set by the Office of Superintendent of Financial Institutions, also known as OSFI. OSFI regulates the banks and monolines, but credit unions do not need to follow these OSFI guidelines. But the credit unions may have to follow rules by a local regulator. An example of this is using a mortgage and needing to qualify at a 2% higher rate, also known as the stress test. While many credit unions will use the stress test, they do not have to. This means if you know where to look and how to ask, you can have the stress test waived. Credit unions have the ability to blur the lines between commercial, residential, and business lending, making them the most flexible of the A lenders. Overall, A lenders have the most competitive interest rates, but they're restricted to qualify applicants using tax returns. Many A lenders will not look at more complex sources of income, and they require self-employed borrowers to pay themselves a higher income and have a higher tax bill. With all A lenders, you can expect to be asked for all sorts of documents like tax returns, ID, and bank statements. Getting a mortgage is far easier if you're prepared. If you want to know what documents you'll need, there's a tool that can get you a list of exactly what documents you need so you can be ready. B lenders charge higher rates but are far more flexible than A lenders. They require 20% down and still qualify based on income, but can satisfy their income requirements in different ways. Whether it's from roommates, adding up deposits, or bank statements, or using 100% of a rental property's income, they can meet these income requirements in creative ways. The drawback to B lenders is they often require large amounts of paperwork to verify the incomes they use. B lenders manage risk by vetting the borrower and screening the property. This can lead to B lenders declining deals for older, smaller, or more rural properties. And these lenders balance the requirements on the borrower and the property. Whether it's easier qualifying so you can save income on taxes or getting a mortgage with a consumer proposal, or needing income from a new business, B lenders can offer the flexibility you need to get approved. One of the most common uses for B lenders is self-employed borrowers using the flexibility of a B lenders programs to save tens of thousands of dollars in taxes at the cost of a couple thousand dollars of interest. Last is the most expensive of your lending options, which is private lenders who will lend on the assumption they will foreclose on the property they're financing. This means that there is a heavy focus on the property and the exit strategy with less concern on the borrower situation. A key term in private lending is loan to value, which means the amount of debt relative to the value of the property. A low loan to value private mortgage might cost 9% interest, while a high loan to value mortgage might cost 15. The loan to a value of a mortgage and the marketability of the property being lent are the primary concerns of a private lender. The second most important concern for a private lender is the exit strategy. 
They price the mortgage based on the assumption they will foreclose, but it's not something they want to happen. Private lending is expensive and generally unsustainable, so a clear plan to pay off the mortgage is needed. This could be refinancing, selling, or other options, but the key is that there's a reasonable expectation that you will be able to pay off the mortgage in a reasonable amount of time. The longer a private mortgage goes on, the higher the risk is for the lender, so they typically like shorter term deals like six months to maybe two years on the long side. Now there are two types of private lenders. The first are mortgage investment corporations or mix. These lenders have a large pool of funds from investments and investors, and they have a set of rules they must follow. A common example is most mix will only lend on the purchase price or the appraised value, whichever is lower. But a common request is for a lender to lend on the market value of a property when it is higher than the purchase price. To get this done, you generally need to find a true private lender. This is usually an individual and comes at a higher cost. The biggest drawback to true private lenders is consistency and reliability. It's not uncommon or unheard of to hear that an individual private lender has pulled the money on a deal days before it was supposed to fund, and this can leave an investor or a borrower in a lurch. An example of using private lending for positive purposes would be using a private mortgage as a worst case scenario to write a subject free offer on a home. If this allows you to buy the property for $40,000 or $50,000 less, and the private mortgage will only cost you ten dollars or $15,000 of interest, this can be a huge benefit for you. The goal is to allow you to write an offer on the property with the private lender as a worst case, but with the most likely scenario being using an A lender to close on the property. So we're simply using the private lender as a safety net to create a better offer. It's critical though that you ensure to do your proper due diligence and make sure that you do not cut corners because if you do write a private, if you do use a private lender to write a subject free offer, once your offer is accepted, you're bound to buying that property. So you need to make sure you do your due diligence correctly. Getting a mortgage is unlikely to get easier anytime soon and knowing which lenders to approach will be key in getting your mortgage approved. The best way to be successful is to remember that all lenders see your mortgage as a risk they're taking on. The trick is knowing how each type of lender manages those risks and how to show them that you're a good investment. The key is communicating effectively with the lender in the way they want you to. So with A lenders, it's showing them good credit and good income in the way they recognize it. With B lenders, it's showing good character, reasonable income, and a reasonable property. And with private lenders, it's showing them a good property with a strong exit strategy. If you have any questions or need any help, let us know. We can be reached at kbmortgages.ca. 